Welcome to Electro Online, and now let's try to get kind of an idea of what Fermi energy and Fermi velocity is. It has to do with the quantum mechanics state of material at very, very low temperatures, all the way down to zero Kelvin. Fermi energy is the kinetic energy of the highest occupied state at that low temperature. In other words, when there's no thermal motion whatsoever, the Fermi energy can be defined as the energy, the quantum mechanic energy contained within the, in this case, electrons, we would say particles, but in this case, electrons, and they have that energy solely due to being in that particular state, not because there's any kinetic energy due to heat or any thermal agitation. So it is the energy particles, in this case electrons, have solely because of quantum mechanic motion, not caused by thermal energy at all. And the velocity that these particles or electrons have due to Fermi energy is therefore called the Fermi velocity. So it's the quantum mechanic motion of these particles that is then known as the Fermi velocity. We can calculate the Fermi energy using this equation right here. So let's see what it depends on. First of all, it's h squared, where h is Planck's constant, divided by twice the mass of the particles, in this case electrons, and so the mass of an electron is equal to 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, times this quantity, 3 divided by a pi, times n sub e, to the, third, to the 2 thirds power. Now, n sub e is the density of the charge carriers which, of course, if you have one charge carrier per atom, which is typically the case for like copper or silver or gold and things like that, or even aluminum, then the density of the charge carriers equals the density of the atoms in the material. For copper, we have as an example the density to be 8.47 times 10 to the 28 at atoms per cubic meter, which of course means that many charge carriers per cubic meter. Since the velocity, the Fermi velocity, is proportional to the square root of the energy, the Fermi energy, and the Fermi energy is proportional to the density of the charge carriers to the two-third power, and the conductivity is the inverse of the resistivity, which therefore the conductivity is proportional to the drift velocity, ultimately we can then conclude that the conductivity goes up, if the Fermi velocity goes down or the Fermi energy goes down and the resist resistivity goes up if the Fermi velocity goes up. So there is a relationship between the conductivity and the resistivity and that Fermi velocity and that Fermi energy. Of course, this is the quantum mechanic behavior of the material. It has an impact on how well it can conduct electricity or how well or how much it can oppose the conduction of, of current. But in the ultimate state, we can say that if you take into account the ionization energy and the mean free distance between collisions, you have already accounted for a great portion of the conductivity and the resistivity of the material. And then if you mix with that the quantum mechanic behavior of the material, which of course is quite complicated, then you have a full picture of why some elements such as copper and silver and gold and aluminum conduct charges quite readily and while others do not so much. And that is why we can then differentiate between the various ways in which matter can conduct charges. And definitely Fermi energy and Fermi velocity do have a role, maybe not as great a role as the distance between collisions and the ionization energy, but it's part of the triad of things that control the permittivity and, or I should say, not the permittivity, but the, um, the um, conductivity and the resistivity of materials.